want to tell you about my friend Jane. Jane has just paid $3,000 for her brand new fancy website. She can't wait to see all the new bookings arrive for her nutrition advice practice. She's looking forward to seeing her calendar full and her bank balance healthy. But except all she hears is over the next few months, Jane only receives one or two new bookings through her website. She was really hoping that this new website was going to explode her new business. So what happened? Jane built a beautiful new website, but why didn't the customers come? The answer is one of two things. So either they didn't know she or her website was there in the first place, or they may have stumbled upon her website, but they had no reason to trust her. I'm gonna make sure you don't end up like Jane. What are the three things you need to ask yourself then before you get started? The first question then is, should you blog at all? Yes, I know it's, it's insightful stuff, but no, really. Should you actually start a blog? In order to answer this question, you need to add, ask another three questions. The first one is, do you like to write? The second one is, do you have time to write? And if the, the answer to these two questions was no, could you possibly pay someone or hire someone to write for you. The reality is that blogging isn't a quick way to grow your website traffic. It can take months, if not years, to build up a library of co quality content, but it can be done with a clever strategy. More on that coming up. Question two then, why should you blog? Blogging the right way can increase your website traffic. It can build authority in your niche. You can expand your skills and you can ultimately get more customers because that's what we're all here for. Okay, so you've decided you're able and willing to start a blog. Question three then, what should you blog about? Aha, the million dollar question. So before you put pen to paper, you're gonna ask some more questions. I know it's starting to be a bit of a theme for this video. Anyway, now we're getting into the nitty gritty of blogging. So knowing what to blog about, it comes down to how well you know your audience. You need to know who are they? What are their fears and concerns? What are the questions that they need answers for? What are their interests? What's their economic status? Are they men or women? Taking time to build up this audience persona, it can really help you get to grips with how you can help them. What are the questions that they need help with? And can you answer these questions? This is what you blog about. And at the core of it, it's that simple. However, in practice, it does get a little bit more complicated to do it right. Take some time now to make a list of the questions that you think they need help with and that you can help them with. You're gonna need these for the next step. For best results, pause the video and make the list now. Okay, now you have your list. We're gonna jump into my super simple keyword strategy. For a disclaimer, this isn't an extensive keyword strategy. Keyword research is a video, if not a series of videos on its own and keyword research tools are traditionally some of the most expensive on the market. So we're gonna keep things as relevant and practical as possible. First of all, we need to take the list of our questions from the previous step. Now we need to get specific. So let's help Jane out a little bit and we'll use her as an example. So she offers nutrition consultations to clients. So something that her clients might ask her is, how do I lose weight? Now, number one, this is quite broad and it's also a highly competitive keyword. You're gonna find many, many very authoritative sites writing blog posts on this topic. So the chances of your small website ranking for this is slim. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna get more specific. So instead of Jean writing a blog post on how to lose weight, she's gonna write a blog post on how to lose weight when you have celiac disease or how to lose weight if you have diabetes. And you can see where I'm going with this. You need to say how to lose weight or whatever your keyword term is, but get a little bit more specific. This is gonna reduce the search volume for that keyword, but it's only also gonna greatly reduce the competition. The less competition there is for the keyword you want to rank for, the more chances that someone is gonna read your blog. Make a list of these more specific questions now. The next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna to go to the website, ryrob.com, and you're gonna put in each of the keywords you generate from the last step one by one. You will see a list of keywords similar to the one you typed in. You need to make a note of any of them that have a low or medium competition. As a small website, there's little chance that you're gonna rank for a higher competition keyword. You also wanna make sure that there's at least 100 searches per month for that keyword. You wanna do this for each question or keyword that you've come up with. Now you should have a list of questions or keywords that have a decent amount of search traffic 
but are low or medium competition. These are the things that your small website has a chance of ranking for, but we're not done yet. The next step is essential in order to get website traffic from your blogs. Just on a side note then, you may be in a business area that is quite niche already. Uh, let's try and think of um, some sort of example. Let's say you're a reflexologist, but you only do reflexology for pregnant women. Or let's say, for example, you run a forest school for primary school children. Now, because these are quite specific already, you may find it difficult to find enough keyword research data from these tools. There might simply be already quite a small volume of people searching for these things, but that's okay. But we might need to use a slightly alternative approach. So what I want you to do is I want you to go with one of your broader term keywords or questions and basically type that into Google. It's not gonna give you the same data with regards to traffic or competition. However, it's gonna give you an idea of what people have previously searched for in relation to the keyword that you're putting in. So let's say we'll take one of our broad keywords, let's say something like with regards to our forest school, is forest school good for? And then we're gonna put the letter A. And Google will autofill what potential questions people are asking. And then you're gonna put, is forest school good for B, C, D? And each time you do this, you're gonna get ideas for keywords that you can potentially rank for because we know people are actually searching for these things. So even if you're one of these quite niche businesses already, you should be with this method be still able to move on to the next step. The next thing now is our action plan. This is the 10 things that you need to do in order to actually get traffic to your website. You need to make sure that you're writing great content. It needs to truly impact your reader. It needs to be written for humans, not the Google search algorithm. Blog posts must deliver on the promise. You must answer the question that people are looking for. You're gonna have correct meta title and description for your blog posts. Blog posts must be skimmable so that it's easy for your readers to be able to find the exact answer that they're looking for. Your blogs must be easily readable. So you wanna think about breaking up your blog posts with titles, with images, with sections, with list icons. You wanna try and keep your sentences and your paragraphs fairly short. You wanna include your keyword naturally throughout the post. And you also wanna include your keyword in things like in your image alt text. These are all ways that reinforce to Google exactly what your blog post is about so that it can recommend it to the right people. You wanna have links to other parts of your website and to other websites within your blog post. These are called internal and external links. Your website must be optimized for mobile and it must load fast. The next thing is really important. You wanna try and get backlinks to your website. And that is basically where websites with more authority than your website will link to your website. And now you can do this through writing guest blog posts for other websites, but also by being a guest on a podcast. This over time will increase your website authority with Google. That's our 10 step action plan. So what are you gonna do next? Are you gonna settle for mediocre website traffic? Or are you gonna try blogging in order to grow your website and grow your business? I'm gonna leave that to you. Please consider subscribing. If you wanna learn more about blogging, building your website, and your business. Thanks so much for watching.